Hey everybody, this is Al from El Rey Collection. Hope everything's going well and that uh, you are enjoying the videos that I put out. As a reminder, please subscribe and uh, like the video. That helps all the algorithms. And this is one of my popular series, the top 10 cards of a specific decade. We're all the way up to the 1970s, the uh, decade that saw me born. Um, so while I love these cards, uh, I did not collect them as a kid. I did not collect them until materially later in my uh, collecting career. You know, 1970s sees kind of a Pele's transition to the uh, North American Soccer League. We also have Cruyff at his, at his um, height in terms of a clockwood orange in the 1974 World Cup and his time in Barcelona. We also had the rise of uh, a young superstar, Maradona, which would – take over the mantle from Pele as the best player um, probably ever in terms of um, talent. So uh, 70s are a super fun time. I'm trying a new format here. Instead of showing you the cards, I'll show you scans of the cards. Um, some people mentioned in the past there were some glare issues or I didn't hold them on the screen. So it's all about the cards. I'll be a little bit off to the side here. And we will again count down from uh, number 10 to number one. So let's see if you agree. Look forward to hearing your comments. If you uh, have any, please post them. And again, please like the video. So um, here we go. Without further ado, I will move into number 10. And number 10 on the list is this 1979-80 Vote Ball Rue Gillett uh, card. And this one's in, a, in an SGC 6.5 very close to a seven. This is a super tough sticker. And, you know, you, you, you find it very frequently miscut. Um, it's just not, not an easy one to find. It's probably, I'd say marginally more difficult than even the Van Basten um, rookie. So this is, um, and this is mislabeled. I think uh, SGC puts 1980, but this is clearly a 7980, um, you know, sticker from the album, obviously, Part of uh, the, one of the main players of the Dutch dominant team that would later win the Euros in the 1980s, um, and and just a great great sticker, tough to find. Um, now we have uh, number nine on the list is none other other than Franco Varese in this 1978-79 uh, Lampo. This is um, a really really tough one to find, especially in this type of a grade. This is a SGC seven, super clean sticker. This sticker also just yells 1970s. You can see just the format, the little stars. But they say, you know, as a player, probably one of the best defenders uh, ever. He he could certainly uh, give Maldini a run for his his money as the best Italian defender ever. Um, his calciatore is much more common. And can be found in in the full ram at, uh, the full run of grades from one to I think nine. Um, this one has very very few copies. Really tough to find, and uh, and and really kind of a highlight of anybody say uh, collection. So that brings us down to uh, number eight, and number eight in this um, in this countdown is the incredibly rare Americana Munchen Hugo Sanchez. And this is not, there's another Americana Munchen, which is a, a smaller sticker, but this is actually a really thick card. Very similar to any Topps cards issues in the 1980s, or if you're from the UK, AMBC cards. Um, this is a full card stock. It has a puzzle back. I was very common in the 1970s, think Star Wars cards. Um, and it just has unbelievably beautiful uh, colors here on the left hand side you've got the mexican colors and obviously sanchez is playing for the mexico team as you can see up here and then on the uh, on the right hand side you have the argentine colors because the world cup in 1978 sanchez is one of the more interesting you know players because he played for a number of years with uh, pumas in mexico city and actually the san diego soccers um, and we just can't find any material from his time in either of those places. So this currently stands as one of his, you know, five or so rookie stickers, all commemorating the 1978 World Cup. And uh, this is one of my favorites. I have I've seen a couple of other cards from this set, but never another uh, Sanchez. So truly an elite uh, collectible in any condition. And this is a uh, an SGC two, super fun. You can see. 
the the puzzle on the back, you can get the idea that it's the 1970, at least from this cutout, 1970 World Cup Brazilian champion team. So uh, so that's Hugo Sanchez making an appearance at number eight of the top cards in the El Rey collection from the 1970s. Now moving to lucky number seven, we have uh, Socrates, Dr. Socrates, not only a fantastic midfielder and general of one of the greatest Brazilian teams ever, but also a doctor in his own right, a philosopher and, and, and a certain, certain influencer in the political landscape of Brazil. So he is, you know, uh, re revered in many different levels. And this is his sole rookie card, which uh, hails from the 1976 graph set in the Campeonato Nacional 78. A lot of these are uh, are miscut and and most of them are actually unstuck from the album this is a tough tough sticker of an absolute great of all time um you know it's 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 hard to find for many years we thought the 78 ping pong was his rookie he has some really cool 1977 stickers that we found but this is the only 1976 and therefore you know is is, is pretty sought after you can see him in a sao paulo uh uniform here and it's just an absolute great, great sticker. And you should expect to find these if you find them in um, PSA 1 to 2 shape. This one has never been stuck, which is rare, but unfortunately is miscut. So it's a 5MC, meaning that it would translate more or less to like a PSA 3 in terms of value. Nonetheless, great, great sticker. Uh, and, and one that is just pride of, of the 1970s from my perspective. So now moving to number six we have the hero of the 1978 uh, world cup for uh, argentina and and again it's a pretty scarce uh fulbito disc from mario kempis um you know he he really you know ran the show for argentina in 1978 you'll remember that maradona was the last player to get cut in 1978 and he, uh, you know, didn't make the team, therefore. So his first start in a World Cup is until 1982. Um, and then, of course, not to talk too much about Maradona, but obviously he wins in 86 and makes it to the finals of, of uh, 1990. So, you know, you just there's a lot of what could have happened. How good of, would have Argentina have been in 1978 if they had a young Maradona on their side as well? The reality is they didn't need him. Because uh, uh, you know Kempes and, and Passarella really carried the day in '78 um, and won the World Cup on home turf. Unfortunately for uh, for a pretty terrible uh, Argentine um, uh, military government. Nonetheless, it, uh, the, he is a great player, and this particular pog um, is is tougher than the Maradona pog in terms of uh, pops. And this, I think, is one of the higher grades being a PSA 6, probably just because the lack of of, uh, of many being graded. Still an excellent uh, POG. Argentines, um, you know, have collected POGs, you know, dating back to the 1930s. It's a very common format for them. So for those of you who uh, feel like things need to be a card, um, really not in Argentina. The vast majority of of uh cards are actually pogs and and this is a great example of an elite collectible coming out of um, argentina in psa 6 condition so moving um up or down depending on the way that we're looking at to the number five position on the top cards from the 1970s is none other than pele himself in a 1970 world cup sticker these stickers are exceedingly gettable uh certainly in removed condition but also in unstuck condition but exceedingly difficult in a psa 9 in fact there's only a handful of um of psa 9s across all the different back variations which i will remind you now the most common back uh variation from my perspective is the um is the green back and then it's pretty close between the multi-language back, which is presented here, which is the red and black back you may sometimes hear, and the Bis Valida, which was issued in Italy, but that was the, pro the, the prize back. So you got the two uh, stamp credit for the Bis Valida. But since so many more packs were issued in Italy, to me, it's kind of like a wash between the Bis Validas and the, uh, the multinational, the, the multi-language backs. 
And then, of course, the rarest backs are the red and back black, the red and blue backs. Sorry, lots of Bs in that. And those are the ones that are cut out from the album when they give you, if you open the an, an un, um, uh, you know, brand new album from the 1970s, it would have had a strip of four cards on it, and then you would have cut those out manually. So every single red and blue back of this sticker is hand cut. Don't let anybody tell you differently. There were no blue and red backs ever issued in packs. So those are all hand cut. And if you want machine cut ones, you're either in the Beast Valida, the green standard back, or this multi-language back. Um, PSA 9, super hard grade of what is probably one of the more iconic World Cup stickers of all time. Uh, pretty Pretty nice mix there, and that's why this one lands on number five of the most important cards and stickers from the 1970s in the El Rey collection. So now we're going to talk about the big boys in the um, in the um, collection, the top four from the 1970s. It gets really exciting here as we kind of um, you know get into these, and number four is the probably one of my favorite cards as a card in all of collecting soccer collecting it's the 1970 71 monty gum and this is johan cruyff um and this card i mean just the design screams in 19 you know 70s with all those soccer balls around uh just great artwork it's an actual card beautiful colors you've got the uh, ajax um you know, symbol over here, this, this card just rocks. And as we've seen through time, it actually has, you know, proven to be significantly harder to find, especially in top grades than uh, even the, the, the Palorex, which would be his preferred rookie. So this one bleeds into the 1970s and there's so many hard, you know, stickers to, to choose from of Cruyff. And remember that I've limited myself to two maximum per player, which is really hard in these per decade ones. But I think this one just stands, you know, at the top of the mountain as far as these goes. I could pick many other honorable mentions, 74, you know, World Cup, some uh, Atrocolete um, card from in his time for Barcelona, many, many other really cool Cruyff uh, stickers and cards. But this one to me is like top shelf. And I would almost, in similar grade, I would almost always pick this card over, uh, you know, rookie stickers like the the Vanderhoot and um, and the um, the Sicker Verlag. Um, probably not in 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 versus the Palorex. Like if you gave me a choice, have this 1970 Monty Gum in PSA seven or a Palorex. Uh, in PSA 7, I'd probably take the Palorex, but I'm unsure. Certainly, um, I, I think it, I would rather have this than the Vanderhoot and, and probably the Sicker Verlag as well. But, you know, that, that's that's kind of how important this card is. It's it's while it's not a rookie, it's really close in terms of um, how how important the the card is, how beautiful and and how um adjusted you know for rarity how uh, desired this this card is so uh the next one oops oh no i jumped oh no it's jumping um okay the next one number three hopefully you didn't see that number three is going to be the incomparable zico uh zico took the mantle from from pele as brazil's best uh striker best forward uh, always so much was expected of him fell for fell flat in 82 and 86 but still widely regarded as one of the best brazilian strikers ever which is saying something um most lists will have zico as a top 20 certainly top 30 player of all time he's very well forgotten um i would say and doesn't get the respect that he deserves maybe because he never won um a world cup but this is his rookie from 1971, which is crazy because a few years ago, we thought his rookie may have been the ping pong cards from 1978 and slowly found others from 77 and 76. And slowly we've been moving back and there's a lot of great 1970s-esque cards that have 
beautiful colors and psychedelic type themes. But in the end, it's hard to, to argue with rookie cards and stickers. And this here is Zico's uh, only rookie. There's a 1972 card that has a blank back that looks very similar. doesn't have the, the, the number on, but that's a 1972. And these titulares de oro um, have, uh, there's some different color variations in the ink. I think blue, black, and pink, if I'm not wrong, or red. Um, so Zico, amazing player, only rookie, low pop. Wow, hard not to like this. Even in removed condition, or this particular one, which is not only removed, but gets a PSA 2 MC because it's miscut. A lot of these are, are terribly miscut. Which leaves us to, which you've already seen, uh, if you had quick eyes and were paying attention, number two on the list, which I really struggled with this. I also have a 1978 crack, which I think from an eye appeal perspective makes it, this was really a toss up for me. Uh, I think because it was the PSA five and this one's a PSA six, and I can only have two Maradona cards in this video from 19 um, for the 1970s. I think I'm going to go with this one, which is the Campion. It's not as nearly as attractive to me as the crack, but it's just an ultra high grade and PSA six, um, this um, Libro de Estampas. You also, if you check the pops, it's much more scarce. So those two elements push it, push it a notch up, but I have no problem of others that would prefer, uh, for instance, my PSA uh, five um, crack. Um, but there's just, you know, I think somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, four to five times the amount of, of cracks graded as you'll see uh, Campiones. And for that reason, I will, uh, I'm going to go with the Campion, even though my, my heart and my eyes tell me crack. So uh, that's number two. And, and the last one really should come as no surprise to most uh, collectors that are knowledgeable about vintage. This year is a 1977 football uh, disc. And, you know, this is an SGC uh, seven. Um, I also have a PSA 7, which you saw on the landing screen. I just put this one here because I think the colors were more vibrant. But um, I'd, I'd obviously rather, from a value perspective, uh, focus on the PSA 7. But I just love the, the color pop here, although the scan almost makes them suntanned. Um, the key on this one, and, and this this card has sold for uh, nearly $200,000 um, you know, over time. I think the last ones have been considerably less than that. But it is, you know, there's less than 100 of these pogs still, um, you know, very hard to get in high grade. Most of them are removed, so you'll have, you know, damage on the back, which will be, you know, typically a, a PSA or SGC A to 2. So, uh, you know, those, you know, I, I still find this is one of the most elite Maradona uh, collectibles that you can find. Um, you know, do, I, I personally prefer um, copies that have little, these notches around the edge, so you, you know that that are pretty common on the pogs. Uh, I've been collecting these for a long time, and you know, ninety-five percent of the ones that have crossed my desk have had them, which just adds to the authenticity from my perspective. I also like to be able to read the Argentina uh, uh, juniors, um, all but like one or two letters on the shirt, just to make sure those weren't copied out. Um, so, you know, I would be slightly concerned about, you know, certainly verifying the authenticity of these pogs before. Um, so make sure you carefully check the scans, ask me or others for, for, for their opinion. And, uh, you know, as gen and, and in general, you know, trust the, the better grading companies that have experience with these, um, issues. So, uh, you know, hard to argue with, you know, one of the greats of all time, their true rookie, their only rookie being at the top of the mountain of the 1970s. But there's so many amazing, uh, you know, cards and stickers of the 1970s from a from from a you know different perspective. You know, I'd say that there's a lot of the hobbies on, um, you, you know, unsung kind of heroes. I mean, you know, I it was super hard for me not to to have um, Platini on this list. I just didn't know. You know, if if I could, you know, maybe take away, you know, slip him into to tenth place or ninth place. But but I just 
looking at the pops and looking at the rarity of the cards, I decided to leave him off. I feel terrible about that. You know, I, I really, you know, from a player perspective, how can you leave a three-time Ballon d'Or off? Remember, this isn't about the best players. This is about the best cards and stickers. And, um, and you know, while the value, you know, may be higher certainly than some of these lower on the list, I just think of, you know, the, the top cards in the El Rey collection, and I decided to leave uh, that off. I also decided to leave off, you know, uh, Cruyff's um, 74 a World Cup sticker, um, you know, a Maradona's uh, 79 Calciatore. This beautiful, one of my favorite things you'll see here on this this um, this um, landing page from the 1970s, this Cropon with, uh, with Cruyff on it. Oh, I just love that. So many cards and stickers to love. All the A and B C stickers from the ninth, from uh, the UK have some, you know, just some great, great uh, stickers in there, but you know, I got to pick 10. These are the 10 I picked today. If you ask me in a year from now, it can juggle around. So uh, right now, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please subscribe and like and uh, post your comments. Let me know where I went wrong and uh, would love to uh, debate and share opinions with you guys. So uh, look forward to the 1980s coming soon.